crate must have had bananas or something in it. It's empty now. It's built out of thin wooden boards. Probably didn't have to bear much weight. This wooden crate is big enough to completely conceal the bag. It'd be protected from prying eyes. And I could make my exit from the scene of the crime unnoticed. There's still one problem. Someone might see me picking up the bag and putting it into the crate. There probably isn't a single newspaper between Moscow and Madrid that's not reporting on the burglary. I'm famous! Unfortunately, not for the sort of elegantly executed theft I'd like to be known for. Burglary in British Museum, one casualty, 5,000 pounds damage, culprit unknown. Return of the Raven? I'd have escaped anyway, but Inch just couldn't resist playing with dynamite. I hope the security guard recovers soon. They won't let me ride along in the freight car, not even if I ask nicely. Some of the passengers got off the train to stretch their legs, but this man started his journey right here in Zurich. He waited a good ten minutes for the train and began to get impatient. Judging by the bag, He's a doctor. He radiates self-confidence, almost arrogance. A leather bag like the ones used by country doctors for carrying their equipment. Hmm. If I swipe the bag, it'd cause confusion while people look for it, and I might be able to sneak onto the train. The only problem is, I can't take the bag with me. Not a chance. The doctor could easily spot me taking his bag. He'd sound the alarm, and our Swiss friend would have no choice but to arrest me. And then we'd have a real problem. Clothes maketh the man. Put a uniform on a short, old, rather chubby little man, and they'll show him all due respect, even if he's only a constable. The uniform alone gives him power, and that counts for a lot in this part of the world. I'd better not interrupt their conversation, as long as they're talking to each other, they're distracted and paying less attention to their surroundings. This is the saloon car, fully furnished with a bar and all the niceties. The ladies and gentlemen would have a fit if I just waltzed in there wearing these clothes. I can't board the train like this. I'd stick out like a sore thumb and they'd throw me off without a second thought. If I try to just get on the train, the conductor would probably stop me and might even turn me over to the police. I can't risk that. Huh. Even if I was able to distract the conductor and slip onto the train, I'd stick out like a sore thumb with these shabby clothes. I have to find something more suitable. If I try to just... I can't risk... Sometimes you can find useful things in a waste bin, but this one seems to have been emptied recently. Huh. I can probably pry the bottom boards off without too much effort. They're thin, and the nails are short. Perfect. It looks like a normal crate. It's now or never. Hey, you! Scrap! Uh, yes, sir. Let the games begin. Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> Can't you see that I am talking to the constable? The train is leaving in a few minutes, sir. I have to ask you to board it now. We should get on. Perhaps we'll be able to continue our conversation during the trip. I won't stand in the way. 
<laughs> oh, where's my bag? You left it right there. I know that. I want to know where it is now. I, I don't know. I, I'll look for it right away. If you gentlemen would get on the train in the meantime... I will hold you and your employers liable for this. I'm sure he'll find the bag. Come on, Dr. Gebhardt. I will help you with your luggage. Fine. The conductor doesn't really seem to know where to search for the lost bag. Finding a particular piece of luggage at a railway station is like finding a needle in a haystack. You seem to be searching for something. Can I help? Go away. There's no money to be earned here. That's not what I mean. I just thought, if you're looking for a brown bag... Why? Did you steal one? If that were true, I wouldn't be offering to help you. I saw a little blonde boy take the bag. He ran off with it, over there. Really? Hmm. Thanks. Isn't that the bag? Where? Nothing personal. No! Oh, man! Let me have a look. Damn, I can't let the professor see me. I shadowed him for days in London. He might recognize me. Calm down. See what that means. Professor Lucien seems to travel light. The Baroness's luggage takes up half a freight car. I don't think that the suitcase or the bag contain anything that could help me out. I'd better leave as little evidence as possible. My god, I barely look like myself. Raven slipping into other roles. He's had decades to perfect it. Whatever. It'll be good enough for the people on the train. The sink. The sink. No, that won't help me now. Professor Lucien hasn't slept a single night in the cabin yet. The towel is unused. If I twisted it, then I'd have a sort of rope. It was the only window that was open at the station, so it was a good way to get onto the train. And now, it might be my only way out. Cabin. And the one on the left is the saloon car. The roof 
could be my escape route. level with the roof, but the roof is too slanted and smooth to climb. <laughs> There's nothing quite like traveling on a train. the freight car with fresh air. It also seems big enough to climb through. I'd say I found my way in. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. but the rear of the car through the slots. And that won't do. What I really need is a view of the front. Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice frightening me like that. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past my window. Be off with you. Oh, man. Ah, I can use these. Phew, that was close. He left the lock open. How convenient. Let's see. A wrench. You don't say. This is too easy. I should be able to move about freely in the train, as long as I keep away from Professor Monsieur. The other guests don't know me, and conductors change several times during the journey. A new face shouldn't seem suspicious to anyone.
young man. Yes, sir. Tell me, when did they switch to self-service on the Orient Express? Should they not have informed the passengers about that in advance? Uh, forgive me, sir. I was... And what about my bag? Hmm? Did your colleague find it? I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I expected as much. There will be consequences. And now, bring me my coffee. Of course, sir. A dish with old people's candy. Butterscotch, I think. Beer, wine, champagne, gin, brandy, and whiskey. <laughs> the richest snobs take the same medicine as the poorest slobs. Some people that need a drink to steady their nerves doing what I'm doing, but not me. I want a clear head if I'm gonna get this envelope onto the safe. Odds and ends. A hairnet, batteries, a half pack of cigarettes, an unused toothbrush. The bartender probably has to serve as a jack of all trades, like a concierge in a hotel. So, is there anything useful? Here we go a small shaving mirror. A small portable radio. The reception is surprisingly good here in the mountains. I won't be able to use the radio, but the antenna, on the other hand, a thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that might come in handy. There's still some coffee left. the gentleman. Do you know what the problem with people like you is? Um, you mean our lack of a sense of duty, or our skin color, or a lack of respect for our elders? <laughs> we have so many flaws. If that's how it has to be, that should do it. That did the trick. Candy is so sticky that it should hold the mirror without any trouble. <laughs> As I expected, it sticks.
guard. The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. I can shimmy down the shaft and hit him on the head from behind. Uh-oh. Are you okay, Robert? Nothing to report, sir. At ease. Any suspicious passengers come aboard in Zurich, sir? Hmm. Not really. It could be anyone and no one. But we've received support from the Swiss police. A certain Constable Zellman. Oh? Very motivated. Might get on our nerves. That limits my options. I can't overpower two people. And I don't think I'll be able to slip into the carriage unseen after all. Oh, there has to be a way. I have to keep Inch happy. How do I get you onto the safe? Or on top of it? The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. And Inch said something about a blackout and a tunnel. I could use the moments of confusion and darkness to toss the letter onto the safe. Might work as long as I manage to open the ventilation shaft and choose the right moment. Legrand has retired to a dark corner. And the Bobby is hiding behind some boxes. Legrand obviously set a trap for the Raven. Unfortunately, the Raven knows. Is that what this is about? Does Inch just want to mock Legrand? I don't believe... I should only open the cover inside the tunnel. That on the floor. Yes, sir. That was close. If the second screw makes that much noise, it's over for me. Someone from Nancy or Basel. 
I'm guessing she boarded in Paris. Uh, she seems familiar somehow. I've seen her someplace before. Maybe she used to be an actress, and I recognize her from photos. She has the confidence of someone who doesn't have to prove herself anymore. She's rich, that's for sure, but it's not just that. I'd better not talk to her. Her eyes are intelligent and observant. Something tells me I'd only make life difficult for myself if I try to pull the wool over her eyes. The younger woman seems to be some kind of carer or companion for the older lady. I wouldn't like to be with her all day long. She radiates a certain restlessness and unease. I know people like that always have to be doing something. They feel useless if they don't have anything to do. I feel sorry for them. The elderly woman's carer can't keep her hands still, so she's knitting. Can I bring you ladies anything? Is everything satisfactory? Everything is wonderful, young man. Very good. Got it. They should have been able to open the door with pliers. I think the coast is clear. some excuse to sneak out to trigger the blackout and engage the emergency brakes. No idea how he expects to pull that off. He usually leaves me in the dark about such things. Even after months of partnership, he still doesn't trust me completely. Just a few more days and I'll finally be rid of that cunt. And until then, he has to burn in his own personal hell with the Baroness. A nice thought. Obviously, they managed to open the door. I wonder who or what the archaeologist thinks locked it. Did he connect it to the burglary in London? Uh, probably not. Professor Lucien is on his way to Cairo, just like the Baroness. They both know each other. She chairs the Friends of the British Museum Club. I hope he's too shaken up to leave his cabin until we reach Venice. With any luck, I'm going to be a happy family man soon, and I'll need a few francs, lira, or marks. Self-control, side jobs always lead to complications. There are enough unknowns in our plan as it is. No need to add more. The violinist was already on the train in Zurich. Handsome devil. I'm glad my girlfriend is here. She loves to make me jealous, and once I'm raging mad, she leads forward and whispers one of those phrases that only she can say. He seems to be worried about something. So much the better for me. If he's absorbed in his own problems, he won't be paying attention to anyone else and won't be able to offer good testimony to the police. We're still in the Swiss Alps. We should reach the Italian border in half an hour. Climbing over the coal car is the only way to get into the driver's cab while the train is moving. I can't imagine Inch climbing over it to trigger a blackout up front. I bet he paid someone to do his dirty work. Inch almost never takes personal risks, and usually he tries to keep his hands clean. Some maps, info for travelers, some pictures, and the schedule all neatly hung up with magnets. There's a lock at the bottom of the window. Hmm. Maybe. The big map 
shows the different routes the Orient Express took in the course of its long history. It's larger than the other notices, and thus hung up with larger magnets. <laughs> I'll take one with me. Some of the photos are rather nice. Professional work. Should. What? The light's gone out. Flashlights. Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a away with it. Take cover. What's the meaning of this? What do you want here? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I didn't ask how you were. I asked why you spoke to me in public. What was the point of the bomb? Isn't that obvious? I wanted to dispose of Legrand as spectacularly as possible. You almost disposed of me as well. Did I not tell you to deliver the letter and leave immediately? People could have died. But of course, that was the point of the bomb. I don't want to hurt anyone. You know that. And you know that I don't care what you want. Obey my orders and nothing will happen to you, and you'll soon be a rich man. I won't blindly obey orders anymore. I want to know what the plan is. You know as much as you need to know. 
We will steal the second eye in Cairo, before the eyes of the world. The theft of the first eye got everyone's attention. Legrand's death would have increased the excitement immeasurably. But this will do just as well. We'll have a showdown instead. The Raven versus the Inspector. That should also electrify the press. Why are you doing this? I thought it was about the jewels. Why are we making life difficult for ourselves and attracting so much attention? It's about more than that. It's about performing on the greatest stage of all. About the end of a legend. You'll see when it's time for you to see. Until then, just do as I say. And what if I just leave? You knew who you were dealing with the whole time. I don't have time for your hypocrisy. You always knew who you were dealing with. If, for your peace of mind, you have to pretend to be innocent in this situation, so be it. But we both know that you begged me to let you in on the heist. And in this business, one must get one's hands dirty. But, James! James! Where on earth are you? During the trip, we'll keep a low profile and steer clear of Legrand. I, uh, I lost the ticket and the fake passport. I swear, if my arm was still good enough to climb, I'd have disposed of you long ago. Oh, well. I'd prefer that no one see you while you're on board. Smuggle yourself on board and stay under cover until Cairo. Okay. And no more games. Nothing that Legrand, the police, or anyone else could do to you compares to what I will do to you if you don't follow my plan. James! There you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? He thinks he knows me. He thinks I'm stupid and weak. I have him right where I want him. Here's a young thief who'll show an old timer how it's done. Even if it means a bit of solitary confinement. on a pile of clothes. Eh, different fabrics. Some rougher, some softer. This one feels like a fine net. No, I don't think this will be much use. I hope the dock workers have left the cargo hold. I'd better just take a peek. Or at least I'd take a peek if it were possible to open it. Ugh! trunk is built like a coffin. Huh. Feels like metal. Angular. I think it's the trunk lock. There are small round bumps with slots in the middle. Could be screws. Okay, where's the screwdriver? Uh, ah, knife. Uh, there's the screwdriver. So... If I just turn this... Aha! Oh, you're kidding me! Seems to be a strap for holding something on the shelf above the trunk. <sighs> Unfortunately, I can't reach the clasp.
The stuff over there doesn't look like it was recently loaded. Probably part of the ship's inventory. Tools and spare parts, I'd say. Oh, brilliant! Hopefully the clasp won't slip out of the box when I pull the strap. The pipe rolled up against the shelf, but it's still out of my reach. Hmm. All right then, I'll just drive the blade through the end of the strap. I can't reach it. Hmm. It's worth a try. Ta-da! That should hold. My best chance. Steady as a rock. <laughs> Elegant. Okay, I'll tie him up and then get out of here before they start looking for him. And I already have an idea where I can hide. I can't imagine that you just leave. Yeah, and without saying goodbye either. <laughs> No need to be frightened, young lady. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. This is hardly the time or the place. What happened on the train? Nothing. Nothing bad. Everyone is fine. Inch is dangerous. I warned you. I know. That's why we're being careful. And you have a smart and handsome young thief at your side. And humble, too. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. What have I done to deserve a luck like this? Inch bothers me. 
He's shown what he's capable of. What if he finds out about our plan? How would he? We're careful. He's more ruthless than we expected. The bomb on the train. I don't want to think about it. We need to make sure that we stay calm. You mean that I stay calm? I'm not worried about you. I know you. Shall we go over the plan one more time? Good idea. We know that Inch hid the first eye in the Baroness's luggage. I'll break into her cabin and replace the eye with a fake. Right. We'll steal the second eye in Cairo. And Inch will be caught in the act. <laughs> it's simple. The devil is in the detail. I have to get into the Baroness's cabin undetected, then find the secret hiding place, and I can't leave any evidence behind. Yes. And Inch said something about a combination, so the hiding place might be locked. One step at a time. I think I'll assess the situation first. And I think I'll make myself comfortable for a little while. So this is how married life will be. Works for me. Everything went according to plan in London? Except for the explosion, yes. The Bobby was right on time. Because he had a good tip-off. I had enough time to take the eye, but unfortunately there was no time to replace it with the fake. Where is it? A work of art. Almost as beautiful as the original. I can't tell the difference. Inch could. But if all goes to plan, he won't have a chance to take a closer look at the jewel until after the burglary at the Egyptian Museum. Will the Grand cause any trouble? Everything's still going according to plan. That means he's clever, but not clever enough. And the Bobby? Peasant's cunning, nothing more. He won't be able to solve the puzzle on his own. There's still Inch. He doesn't suspect anything. We laid the foundation well. I've been his assistant for months already. He doesn't trust me, but he thinks he can play me for a sucker. That's enough. Speaking of Inch, I saw him talking to you in Venice. What was it about? He was angry because his attack on the train failed and because I lost my ticket. How did you get on the ship? As a stowaway, locked in a cold, dark cargo hold. Poor boy. I'll go out now and lead the police and master thieves around by the nose. I can think of something else to do. I can't. I'm sure I could help you if... Stand aside! If you told me what you're looking for. You're just getting in my way! Now get out! I'll wait at the door, madam. Yes, yes! Oh, miss... Mayors, can I help you? No, I'm just having a look around the ship. Good day. Oh, that was close. Practicality was definitely placed ahead of design here. I guess the Lydia regularly docks at harbors that don't have their own gangways. And rather than make the passengers climb ladders, they opted for the less beautiful alternative.
two handsome sailors are standing at the table and studying a marine map. Good thing they're busy. I can have a look around without being disturbed. If someone leaves the bridge, I'll pretend to be stargazing. And if that doesn't work, I'll just turn on the charm. Hmm, a classic. The thief enters through the ventilation shaft. Can it really be that easy? No, it can't. The cover is screwed shut. All the first-class cabins have their own ventilation. The shaft might be my best point of entry, but unfortunately, the cover is screwed shut. All the f- but No idea what kind of flag this is. But the pole it's attached to could be very useful one day. It's about 80 centimeters long and looks quite stable. Yes, it's sturdy, but it's also too cumbersome to carry around. No, there's no gap to put the pole in. I can't force the cover open. No. All the first-class cabins have their own ventilation. The shaft might be my best point of entry, but unfortunately, the cover is screwed shut. Inch is intelligent and ruthless, a dangerous combination. He's not a brilliant planner, but he is smart and careful. He senses danger. I'm afraid he might suspect that something is wrong. I think he's frightening. You look in his face and you'd believe that he's at peace with the world in himself. But Adil told me about his moon swings. From one moment to the next, the mask falls away and he's capable of anything. No use worrying about him now. I have a job to do. No, you... The poster proudly announces the ship's first Atlantic crossing. The city of New York welcomes the MS Lydia. The silhouette... Look... Very fine handiwork. The model maker even wrote the name of the ship on the tiny life preservers. But the winter garden at the back of the saloon is missing. And the stern deck looks different. It was obviously made before the ship was remodeled. Maybe one of the crew whiled away the long nights at sea building the model. Only someone with a lot of time and a love of the original could build such a thing. Several journals and magazines. Ah, huh, this looks pretty interesting. Art and culture today. Ah, huh, there's something about the exhibition. 
unique masterpieces exhibited for the first time together in their home country, tireless efforts of Baroness von Trebitz. We briefly discussed whether we should try to steal the second eye here on the ship. The lack of escape routes and the 10 centimeter thick door to the safe settled the question. No time for reading. Legrand is an important part of our plan. He's the one who'll arrest Inch in the end. But there's still a lot to do before that happens. The only regular event seems to be the nightly drink in the saloon. Judging from the rest of the entertainment program, it seems necessary. Come in. How can I help you, young lady? Are you the ship's doctor? Uh, yes, of course. You see, that's what I thought, because you've got a uniform and you work in the medical center. Well spotted, young lady. My name is Dr. Gebhardt. How can I help you? What are the other passengers like? Mm, listen, young lady, I, I do not really have time to chat right now. Today is my first day, and it is going mm, differently than I had expected. You do seem a little stressed. Maybe you should relax. Stress isn't good for you. <laughs> you're, you're right. If there is... Nothing else I can help you with. But you weren't really helpful at all. Maybe I'll come back later. Bye now. No use worrying about Would it be okay for you if I get some fresh air up on deck? Of course, my dear. Give my regards to the sea. to carry around unseen. I'm not an expert, but I think that Mr. Kreutzer really is a very skilled violinist. At least, I liked it, and the captain was certainly smitten. Excuse me, gentlemen. She can't have met you, Mr. Kreutzer. Why don't you just let me have a conversation with the young lady? I, I, I just wanted... Did you count the rings on your fingers, my dear? I think I'm going to stretch my legs. But, Mr. Kreutzer, please stay. You simply must tell me more about your wonderful violin. <sighs> if you insist. There seems to be tension between the violinist and the writer. I'd better not get involved.
a wonderful concert, wasn't it? I wouldn't have expected you to be a connoisseur of classical music. Because I'm American? Because you're young and friendly and radiant. Someone like you doesn't have to know a lot to get along well in life. Are you easily prejudiced at your age? In my long experience, there's often a core of truth at the center of every prejudice. Prejudice is the reason of fools. Was that written in the book you once read? Oh, I've read many books. Good books. But not my books, you mean to say. You're a writer? Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, Miss... Mayors. You know, I'm not planning on throwing myself at a man. I'm glad to hear it. You have to work. Earn your own money. Oh, I will. My grades are excellent, and I really want to study acting in New York. None of my books has ever been made into a good film. The stories were twisted, shortened, and simplified so that even the dimmest fellow could follow them. I want to do theater and travel. I speak three languages. That would be three more than most people your age can speak. Do what you have to do, but stay away from bad men. Is this your first trip on the Lydia? That's quite enough. Life is too short for conversations like this. I do wish that rather delightful Swiss policeman had come along. I heard you had an interesting trip on the train. It was thrilling. I'm hoping for an encore. Perhaps in Cairo. Mr. Kreutzer possesses impressive technique, don't you think? He certainly does. His numerous playmates in Austria can tell you more about it than I. You mean, Mr. Kreutzer is a womanizer? I'm not talking about cheap skirts. I'm talking about expensive clothes. A man like him needs funds to support his lifestyle. Just go over to him, my dear. Tell the maestro that your family is wealthy. You have everything he's looking for. Money and a pretty face. Hold your tongue. Mr. Kreutzer. Lady Westmark. Please. Or did you have your eye on me, Mr. Kreutzer? Old, yes. But rich. Jezebel. Mr. Kreutzer. Maestro! That's better. Freeloader. You and Mr. Kreutzer, you seem to know each other. Not really, but I know his type. Parasites who cling to the rich and famous and suck them dry. The young, misunderstood painter. The innovative writer who writes books that no one wants to read. The musical talent that has to be supported. The ladies and gentlemen of high society let the others use them and call themselves patrons. Another word for fool. Didn't you finance archaeological excavations in the Near East and Egypt? For my husband, and I was there myself. I catalogued items for him. And I didn't show him off like a trophy at cocktail parties, but my son was one of them, the worst kind. The kind that sucks not only the money, but also the life right out of a person. May I take my leave? You may. A deck chair in the sunshine on a cruise ship. I'd be a fool to miss out on that tomorrow, but I have to take care of my duties before I can relax in the sun. Ah, lovely big towel. I hope tomorrow I'll have a chance to sunbathe and enjoy the rest of the trip. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model, and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. He's sweating prof- I hope-
a handsome man and a talented musician, but he doesn't seem very happy. Hello, Mr. Kreutzer. Do you want to have a go at me, like the old witch in there? I just wanted to talk to you. Now is not the best time. I just wanted to tell you that I really loved your music, and that Lady Westmacott did not have the right to speak to you like that. Really? How do you know? You don't know me. Then... did she have the right? No, she didn't. That cynical old witch enjoys exposing the weaknesses of others, although we all have them. She as well. She lusts for recognition and acts as though it weren't so... disgraceful. She rejects prizes and awards with snide remarks, but she's angry when others receive them. She needs to know that she's better than others. You seem to know her quite well. I've only met her once or twice, but I know her son and some of her friends. One friend of hers supported me for a long time. No one is brave enough to say it to her face, but everyone hates her. Her or her success? You're so talented. Why aren't you performing on the world's great stages? Fate, perhaps. Or bad luck. My parents opened every door for me and my sister and expected corresponding careers. Overambitious parents who forced their children to play music? No, it wasn't like that. I loved it. I loved to play the violin. They didn't have to force me. I wanted to do it on my own. I thought I would achieve my goals if only I worked hard enough. But... It was not to be. What happened? In a more dramatic story, I'd say that I broke my hand just before my big break. Or that I was rejected because of my nationality or my name, or that I was brought down by a conspiracy. But nothing like that ever happened. I practiced like mad. Got better and better. Really good. But nothing happened. The right people never heard me. I was never in the right place at the right time. Can you imagine how it feels to always be on the cusp of a breakthrough? To be just one evening away from becoming an overnight sensation? To see how other, less talented violinists pass you by because you just aren't lucky enough? How terrible. For every star in the limelight, there are a dozen more that burn out unseen, fading month by month. I didn't want to be one of those people who waste their lives chasing dreams without realizing that they're unattainable. If I couldn't have the life that I always dreamt of, and that my family expected from me, then at least I could have the next best life. The next best life? Mansions, limousines, parties. Everything you could wish for. Though none of it belongs to me. The lady called you a freeloader. <laughs> An ugly word. But maybe not so far from the truth. I move with the rich and famous, and at first glance, I live exactly the life my father always wished for me. A carefree life, easy going. And I play the violin, which I always loved to do. But it's not really like that. It's empty. My life is just a shell. A show. And everyone knows it. I loved something once, and I burned for it. But now, the violin is just an accessory for practicing my real profession. And your family? How could I ever look them in the eyes? A failed violinist who gave up. What does the future hold for you? Isn't it obvious? My hands are starting to shake from alcohol. What will be left once I lose my good looks? I'll have nothing then. And so I'll put an end to it all. You can't say things like that. With my father's pistol, I always have it with me. It... it's gone! <laughs> Fate won't even grant me a quick death. Don't you think you can still make it? No. It's too late now. The real question is... Did I give up too quickly back then? I don't know. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Kreutzer. I don't want to leave him alone with his dark thoughts but I don't have time to care for him either.
He has the enviable talent of being able to sleep anywhere, anytime. He once fell asleep on a cable car and only woke up after he'd already gone up the mountain and back down again. It happened pretty fast between us. It was magic when we first met. Birds of a feather flock together, and he can be very charming. Daddy wasn't at all amused when I brought him home, mind, but I don't think he'd have been satisfied with anyone. I don't like wearing hats, but they do fit the role. And I have to admit that the day in London when we shopped for Patricia Mayers was a lot of fun. Normally I don't carry so many things around, but it would have been suspicious if I'd come aboard with nothing but a rucksack whilst pretending to be the daughter of a wealthy family. I got this necklace from my father. It's supposed to remind me that money isn't the most important thing in life. If all you've got is this penny, as well as family and friends, then you're a very rich girl, he said. I'll take it with me. It'll bring me luck. I always try to carry as few personal items as possible. If my things were ever... Okay then. I am Patricia Mayers. Young, attractive, clueless. I am Patricia Mayers. We booked this cabin because it's centrally located, easy to duck in whenever we need to. Of course, the fact that it's a first-class cabin with a huge bathroom and shower had nothing to do with it. As soon as I've swapped the jewels, I'll treat myself to a hot shower, and then we'll see how the evening progresses. As soon as I've swapped the jewel, as soon as... I could jam the penny in and make a kind of improvised screwdriver. Why not? First class cabins have their own ventilator, but no, there's no I just hope that this is the right shaft. Hmm. I could tie the bath towel around the pole, put the pole across the ventilation shaft, 
and climb down with the help of the towel. Sounds like a plan. Here goes nothing. Ah, Jakob Aust. I finally got you. I'll have them arrest you, and justice will be done. Can I be of assistance, madam? Yes, you can get out of the way. Shall I tidy up, madam? No, it's time to celebrate. Excellent, the coast is clear. It seems like she was searching for a specific photo, and that she actually found it. Jakob Aust, now I've got you, she said. We got our hands on the list of passengers, but I don't recognize the name. Hundreds of black and white photos, many of them tinted. From the 20s and 30s, I guess. Oh, I don't have time to deal. The Baroness wrote something down and took the slip of paper with her. It's probably not important. Impressive for a quick drink on the go. Napkins and towels, but no jewel. More bottles. Might be the good stuff. Gin, whiskey, liqueur, sherry, vodka, brandy, and champagne. Every bottle is at least half empty. Corkscrew, bottle opener, coaster, nothing else. What's that? A small leather strap. Aha! I'd put money on the eye of the Sphinx being behind this door. I don't think anyone would bet against me. The door is locked. I have to find the right combination to get in. Hmm. Nefertiti, Guernica, A.D., Buonarotti's Adam. This could be a memory aid for the Baroness. And it would explain how Inch discovered the combination. I'm going to copy the hints. Hmm. As I see it, I have to decipher these clues to find three of the symbols. Then I can guess the fourth. Well, Nefertiti was an Egyptian queen. The monogram and the two other clues aren't much help. I've copied the hints into my diary. Maybe someone on board can help me to figure out at least three of the four symbols. King could probably wear my clothes. It'd disappear under the Baroness's clothes, though. As a child, I often stood in front of shop windows and tried to stand as still as the mannequins. When I got bored, I claimed that one of the mannequins had blinked and declared myself the winner. Not even a deal would believe that this painting was an original. He was interested in art when we first met, but for him it was always about the content not the technique. I had my work cut out, teaching him to concentrate on the stroke. 
the material, and the signature of the artist. It's the only way to distinguish an original from a fake. I don't care who painted it as long as it speaks to me, he said. A perspective that, as an art thief, I can't share, but it's charming nonetheless. Is someone else after the eye as well? But even if that is the case, what does the audio tape have to do with it? I can't let it get to me. I have a job to do. Luckily, I don't have to go through all these suitcases. Inch has been traveling with this woman through Europe for months. <laughs> I almost feel sorry for him. Almost. I'm here to steal one of the most valuable jewels in the world. Not to swipe the contents of handbags. Maybe it was a steward who checked whether everything was ready for the Baroness's nightly rest. Whoever it was, I should leave as fast as possible before someone comes back. It seems like Dr. Gebhardt was able to wrestle himself away from his work, but he still doesn't seem to be very relaxed. Quite the opposite. And why won't he go to the saloon? Dr. Gebhardt! Getting some fresh air? Oh, you could say that. Do you know the Egyptian queen Nefertiti? Uh, yes. There is a famous bust of her. Really? Tell me more. No, I, I am sorry. I, I do not have time for that. Does Guernica mean anything to you? Now listen, young lady, I do not know what they told you, but just because I am German, I am not responsible for the crimes of my government. Crimes? What are you talking about? <sighs> we obeyed orders, just like everybody else. Now leave me alone. Do you know what the monogram A.D. stands for? What? A capital A with a small D below it. Yes, I do. Will you leave me alone if I tell you what it means? You know. It is not just any monogram. It is the first. Albrecht Dürer, a German artist, signed all his works with it. He was the first artist to sign all of his work with a monogram. It was not common to do so before then. Are you sure? His wooden engravings were, and still are, printed billions of times in Germany. Billions of times? You're exaggerating. Not at all. His work appears on German marks. And what? That's enough. I told you what you wanted to know. 
Please, leave me alone now. The silhouette of New York and of a ship. But not of this one. They probably use the same template for every ship. Looks pretty official, with a coat of arms, flag, seal, and all the trappings. And the poster is clean as a whistle. Someone seems to cherish it. Dr. Gebhardt? Yes? Buenarati? No idea. Don't know him. But... Try your luck somewhere else and leave me alone, please. Thank you. I ought to be going. Thank God. A deal? In the shower. I found the secret compartment. Oh, brilliant. And the jewel? I'm working on it. A deal? Yes? I almost got caught in the Baroness's cabin. What happened? I don't know. A man came in and I just had time to hide under the bed. Maybe it was a steward who came to clean the cabin? And turn on a tape recorder in the cupboard? Huh. Maybe it was Inch. He wanted some music? There was nothing on the tape. It was playing, but I didn't hear anything. Something is rotten here. Don't bother your pretty little head about it. Swap the eye and hurry back. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> I don't think your surprise will really surprise me. The secret compartment is secured with a combination lock. Is there any way in? Not without leaving evidence. I need the combination. <sighs> are there any hints? A memory aid consisting of several works of art. There are animals on the lock. Hmm. The works of art might hint at specific animals. Yes, I think so too. About the combination. Yes. Does Nefertiti mean anything to you? Mm, an Egyptian queen. That's it. I didn't have an affair with her, if that's what you mean. She's not my type, and she's been dead for thousands of years. Well then, I'll take your word for it. Guernica. Sounds Spanish, doesn't it? Yes, it's a city in the Basque region. Does it have a heraldic animal? Or maybe the region has one. I don't know. I've, I've never been there. I just know it because the city was bombed by the Nazis during the Spanish Civil War. Nazis? In the Spanish Civil War? Well, not officially, of course. At the request of General Franco, his friends from Germany reduced a defenseless city to ashes and rubble. Picasso immortalized the bombing in his famous painting. Really? Is it on display in Spain? Silly. As long as Franco is in charge, he won't allow that. Where is it? Oh, no idea. Paris, maybe? Picasso lived there for a long time. Hmm. Maybe doesn't help me much. Buonarotti's Adam. Who's that? Buonarotti, um... Seems familiar somehow. To me as well, but I don't know why. Hmm. No, I have no idea. I don't know him. Someone must. I'll be going. Don't waste all the hot water. Never.
art magazine will help me with the symbols. Indeed. An article about the different works of art and how they survived the Second World War. And there's also a picture of the bust of Nefertiti. The unique Egyptian work of art was... 1913. Hmm. Hmm. Permission to export to Germany. Second World War. Safe at the Reich Bank. Then a bunker. And then a salt mine. Prevented from shipping the bus to the United States. Back in Berlin since 1956. Very glad. Blah, blah, blah. Soon in the Egyptian Museum of Berlin and hopefully someday in a reunified Berlin on the museum island. Okay, so the bust of Nefertiti is located in Berlin. Hmm. Berlin. Berlin. The bear! The Berlin bear! There's a bear on Berlin's coat of arms. Nefertiti, bear. That's it! I have to find out where the other works of art are located and which animals are associated with those cities. Now I know what to look for, it'll be child's play. The bust of Nefertiti is in Berlin. The Baroness seems to have a reason to celebrate. She's downing one glass of champagne after another. The less I have to do with her, the better. Best if she doesn't even remember that I exist. Although, based on her alcohol consumption, I don't really think I have to worry about that. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model, and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. Hello, Captain DeCanti. Miss Mayers, how nice to see you. You look beautiful. We missed you at dinner. I was in my cabin. I, uh, I didn't feel very well. Oh. I hope you're feeling better. Lovely concert, wasn't it? You only heard the end. It was really wonderful. All the more curious that Lady Westmacott embarrassed Mr. Kreutzer like that, don't you think? I have no idea what got into her. They say she's a difficult person, but this... Maybe it's the privilege of famous people to be a bit strange from time to time. When I was still a young sailor, Enrico Caruso was a passenger on our ship, <laughs> and he... I think she's fascinating. She's achieved so much, and all by herself. Lady Westmacott, oh yes, that's true. The most successful writer in the world. Do you know any more about her? Everything. <laughs> I'm her biggest fan. What do you want to know? Where is she from? Who were her parents? Her father was a wealthy British salesman. Her mother died in childbirth. She had an outstanding education, but was a lonely child, they say. Her father was away on business most of the time. I know how she feels. For many years, my father's career was also more important than me. Don't say that, my child. Your father paid for the life you now live. Did Lady Westmacott's father marry again? Yes. A woman 15 years his junior. She didn't really care for the child. She was something of a high society lady. She made the headlines with her antics more often than the family would have liked.
and her novels. How did she come to be a writer? In interviews, she always mentions her French tutor, who encouraged her to write when she was a child. After some poems and short stories, she began to write detective novels with a great success. The rest is history. The experts are arguing whether she or Shakespeare has sold more books. Although she doesn't receive the same deference. That's true. But her books are much more innovative and extraordinary than people generally give her credit for. And what does an elderly lady like her want in Egypt? I couldn't really say. She was there many times with her husband, an archaeologist. He died a long time ago. I heard something about a reception at the Egyptian Museum? Yes, for the eyes of the Sphinx. Or rather, for the eye. But I don't think she'd go to Cairo just for that. She usually stays away from official events. Didn't participate in the literary scene either. Always stayed as far away as possible from high society. Probably because of her stepmother. Is it true that you're a war hero? Mm-hmm. In two world wars. That tells you how old I must be. <laughs> you're as old as you feel. Oh, God, I hope not. Aren't you feeling well? You shouldn't burden your pretty little head with the dark thoughts of an old man, my dear. If you don't feel well, maybe you should take it easy. I'm afraid if I take it easy, it'll kill me. <laughs> you seem to be a pessimist. Fatty liver, asthma, gallstones, jaundice, gout, shingles, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, circulatory trouble, knee problems, pulmonary embolism, gastritis, migraine, neuralgia, tinnitus, rheumatism, pleurisy, thrombosis, and constipation. Those are what's been diagnosed so far. My body is a curse. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to... I'm sorry. Forgive an old man. I, I, I didn't mean to shock you. You're still the captain of this beautiful ship. Duh. They couldn't just get rid of me, so they stuck me somewhere where I can't make trouble anymore. Don't say that. This ship runs fine without me. The crew knows what to do. They don't need me. They... They don't want me. Captain! It's... I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm burdening you with all of this. Forgive me, eh? I'd like to rest for a while. Soon enough it'll be time to head back to the coal face. Eh? <laughs> Captain De Conti? Yes? Do you know Albrecht Dürer? Yes, an artist. Not bad. But he has his weaknesses as well. For example? For one, he wasn't Italian. That's a pity. You can say that again. <laughs> At least he lived in Italy for a while. What else can you tell me about him? I once overheard an argument on board between a German and a Spaniard about who elevated the woodcut to an art form, Albrecht Dürer or Alberto Durero. Eventually, they realized they were talking about the same man. Ha! Albrecht Dura is called Alberto Durero in Spain? That's right. Don't ask me why. Buena Rati. That sounds Italian, doesn't it? Ha! You can say that again. Buona Rotti is the name of the greatest artist of all time. We Michelangelo Buonarroti, who most people only know by his first name. Just imagine, one man, an Italian, achieves perfection in all three movements of graphic arts. His David is the most famous statue in the world. As an architect, he was a genius. He built parts of St. Peter's Basilica. And as a painter, Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The creation of Adam. The spark of life leaps from God to Adam. 
One of the most famous paintings in the world. Yes, it is. Does Vatican City have an animal on its coat of arms? No. And the Pope? Every Pope has his own emblem. But the new one doesn't have an animal. You don't seem to like the new Pope. It's too early to say. But who's fit to hold a candle to John the Twenty-Third? Il Papa Buono, as we used to call him. The good Pope. He just died recently. What was his heraldic animal? He was a lion, and so was his heraldic animal. For a Catholic, Buonarroti's Adam could be a mnemonic for the lion. Pope John XXIII was elected in the Sistine Chapel like every other Pope. I just need one more animal. I'm gonna go have a look around. All right. Lady Westmacott never let anyone tell her what to do. They say she was a stubborn one, and today, she's one of the richest women in the world. Lady Westmacott? Yes. It must be exciting to meet all the world's famous and powerful people. I stay away as far as possible from high society. Too shallow. Too boring. But some of them must be exciting. Have you ever met Picasso? <laughs> They told him he's a genius so often that he actually started to believe it himself. But his paintings are impressive. Uh, Guernica, for example. Well, it certainly is big. I have to give him that. Didn't he have to flee from Spain? Yes, from the fascists. But not just him. Many of his paintings as well. If I remember correctly, Guernica is currently on display in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He bequeathed it to a future Spanish Republic. And until then it stays in New York? Yes. It's been there for years now. Have you ever been to New York? For the love of God, what would I do there? We have the original York in England. That's quite enough for me. So, you don't know the heraldic animal of New York? No. Probably an eagle. It's all eagles over there. Are you interested in art? Not really. I'm more interested in real life. In people. So, you don't know Albrecht Dürer? Uh, just because I'm not interested in art doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. What can you tell me about him? Books, my dear, books. In them, you'll find the answers to all your questions, even the most foolish ones. I bet you don't know anything about him, and you just want to cover it up. Ah, you want to appeal to my honor. <laughs> Too obvious, I'm afraid. May I take my leave? You may. The coat of arms of New York City is on the poster. There's the obligatory eagle. That can't be it, since there's no eagle on the lock. But look here. How cute. There are two beavers posing on the New York City emblem. Guernica equals New York equals beaver. That's it. Three animals are all I need. I can guess the fourth. But I could try to find the fourth symbol anyway, just to be sure. Okay, the coat of arms of New York City is on the poster. There's the obligatory eagle. That can't be it, since there's no eagle on the lock. But look here, how cute. There are two beavers posing on the New York City emblem. Guernica equals New York equals beaver. That's it! Three animals are all I need. I can guess the fourth, but I could try... A deal? Yes? About the combination? Yes. Alberto Durero. What about him? What's his most famous work? Uh, hard to say. He did a lot. He was a pioneer of woodcuts and printmaking. The Baroness left his monogram as a hint. 
not the name of one of his artworks. So there must be a painting that everyone associates with him. <sighs> not to my knowledge. Although he did have a favorite motif. And that was? Uh, himself. He made quite a few self-portraits. That's it. The artist is the art. Sounds logical. His most famous self-portrait is in the Prado in Madrid. I saw it with my own eyes two years ago. Does Madrid have something like a heraldic animal? Sure, it's, it's a bear. It's on the coat of arms and all over the city. A bear again? Like in Berlin? Why not? The same numbers appear more than once on normal combination locks. Hmm, that's true. The bear then. All four symbols decoded. Gosh, I'm good. Now, I need to get back to the Baroness's cabin. The jewel is waiting for me. I've got the combination. At least, I think I have. Ha! That's my girl! I'm going to steal the eye now. When I come back, we can celebrate a little. Hooray! I'll be going. Don't waste all the hot water. Never. Baroness von Tribbets? Are you okay? Hello? Baroness? Hello? Adil. What happened? The Baroness. Blood everywhere. But who? I don't know. Inch? Th that doesn't make any sense. Don't move. Zelna, up here. We've got our shadow. Who are you? I do nothing. Me crew. Sure you are. What are you doing here? Just fresh air. <sighs> sure. You just wanted to get a breath of fresh air. Zelna, look who we have here. Well, if that's not our shadow. And our stowaway. Were you recently traveling via trunk? I, uh, nothing. <laughs> he claims to be part of the crew. Just wanted to get some fresh air. Oh, sure. And you obviously didn't attack me either, did you? The Baroness won't open her door, sir. Understood. Take him to the detention cell, Robert. We'll talk later, my friend.
What is? Did nothing. Inspector Legrand thinks otherwise. Move. But I have... Gunshot. I know that. Get moving. Into the cell. Ah. It wasn't my fault. What wasn't your fault? That you were walking around the ship? That you let them catch you? That you endangered the whole plan? That you endangered me? kill anyone. They arrested me purely by coincidence. They'll have to turn me loose in Cairo. I mean, someone was killed, weren't they? I heard a shot. Why won't you answer? I'm having a conversation that you cannot hear. What happened last night? The Baroness was murdered. Did... You? No. If it were up to me, she'd have had an accident in a couple of weeks. Instead, someone shot the old bat in the heart point blank. Are we calling it off? No. Mr. X is ready, and as her surviving representative, I should be able to move about freely in the museum. The old hag's death doesn't change anything. How did you get in here? I'm more than capable of finding the entrance to a cargo hold. Indeed, it was child's play. It's not as though I had to crawl through ventilation shafts or anything so gauche. So, what do we do now? I could escape and... Swim to Cairo. So, I stay here and wait? They'll arrest you in Cairo and question you about the murder. Even if they don't throw you in jail, it'll take days. And if we find the murderer, then they'd have no reason to hold me. Oh, <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. Nervous? I would be if I were you. This Zellner chap wasn't part of the plan. I don't like it. He's groping about in the dark. Legrand is the real problem. Still, I'm going to take him out of the picture. How? Dr. Gebhardt killed the Baroness. A clever old man, but not clever enough to keep me from finding out. So you just have to tip Legrand off, and then I'm as good as free. That's what I thought at first, but then I thought, why waste the opportunity? I put Zelna on the trail of the good doctor. He'll drive Gebhardt into a corner, and when he lashes out in desperation, he might hit our Swiss friend. Maybe even Legrand, if we're really lucky. You can't do that. The old fella's just doing his job. And so am I. Inch, enough blood has been shed. Inch, no more deaths. Damn! I have to get out of here and warn Constable Zellner! Huh. Lock looks pretty modern. Needs a small key... 
Five pins. I could pick it with the right tools. It's a normal lock. I bet I could pick it if I had a wire or something like that. Like everything else on this ship, the bars and hinges are showing their age, but they're still much too strong for me to kick the door open. A very simple construction, a metal bolt connects the door to the frame. It fits perfectly in the hinge. I can't pull it out, and my fingers are too fat to push it out from the bottom. It fits... I guess this cage is some kind of detention cell for the crew. It's not the most impregnable prison in the world, but it's still a problem. I didn't sleep a wink last night. All I could think of was Alex. It's terrible not knowing what happened. The blanket got caught on the nail. A board and a nail. I think it's working. Huh, <laughs> one down. I'll hang it back on the frame, and if I'm lucky, no one will notice my escape. Fire still poses a great threat to ships. There are fire alarms, extinguishers, and hoses everywhere nowadays. I assume that Deputy Oliver is still standing guard. He inspected the cargo hold this morning. I can't use this exit as long as the deputy is sitting by the door. I have to find another way. Before I went to London to become Inch's protege, Alex and I drove through the French Riviera in this convertible. It was a wonderful week. And on the cliffs near Toulon, I asked her to marry me. Ah, but this is no time for reminiscing. There's nothing in the car that might help me. Alex is playing her role as Patricia Mayers, and she can't keep anything suspicious with her. What's this? Whoa, heavy. Everything's a bit bigger and heavier on a ship, pulleys included. Huh. A ring set into the floor. You could attach ropes or chains to it. It's set into the floor to keep people from tripping over it. Huh. You could attach... It's set... Hmm... Good height for attaching something to the hook. Huh. A ring set into the floor. You could attach ropes or chains to it. It's set into the floor to keep people from tripping over it. Huh. You could attach it's set. What's that up there? A grate. Sunlight's shining through it. And above it, a bent pipe. The 
this could be my way out. The bars are welded at four points, and unfortunately they're not all as rusty as this one. That was the a good height. Huh. And now set into the floor. You could attach ropes or chains to it. It's set into the floor to keep people from tripping over it. Huh. Oh, you could attach... It's set... I don't think that... You could attack it's set a good height for attaching something to the hook. Hoses are pretty versatile. They'll do at a pinch if you can't smuggle climbing ropes into the building you're planning to rob. There's no room for the hose if the pulley is on the... I think that was the salute.
that won't work. A good height for attaching something to the hook. Good height for That won't. There's no room for the hose if the pulley is on the hook. Huh. A ring set into the. You could attack. It's set. I don't think that was the solution to the puzzle. Good height.
Here goes nothing. <laughs> Louder than I expected. I hope no one noticed. With luck, I'll be able to warn the others about the doctor before it's too late. No! Ugh. Hey, you, you all right? <clears throat> that bastard didn't inject the fatal dose. You'll be back on your feet soon enough. <sighs> but... Better take it easy while I... Oh no! I'll be right back. Where are you? Uh, no! Why can't you just leave me alone? Stay there. Just relax. Why can't you just leave me alone? It is always the same old story. What old stories? I am a decent man. Why are you torturing me? I just... I... I loved her. She betrayed me. It was her fault. I have blood on my hands because of her. Are you talking about the Baroness? She... She was her sister. I loved her. With all my heart. They were Jewish, you know? But I didn't care about that. I hid them when it became dangerous for them. I looked after them. I brought them food. I was a party member. And still, I hid her and her whole family. You risked your life for a woman you loved. And 30 years later, you murder her sister? I saw her swollen belly. I was so angry. He was one of them, you know? They just used me. I hid them, brought them food, and in return they laughed about me behind my back. What did you do? There are Jews hiding in the basement of the Waldhof. Armed Jews. We have to burn them out. <sighs> and that's what they did. Come down from there. Why? So you can kill me? I'm not gonna kill anyone. Or pack me off to an Egyptian prison? Or an Israeli prison? No. What do you expect? You had an entire family put to death. I am a gentleman. And I expect that others... That... That they... They, they don't... She didn't love you. And was expecting a child by another man. And that's why you betrayed her. It, it, it was her fault. She shouldn't have cheated on me. I, I, I saved her. I risked my life for her every day for, for four months. And then you threw it all away and became a murderer. I am not. I am... Um... 
Yeah, well, the dead Baroness in the ship's hold proves the opposite. I had never met her. Back in East Prussia, she was the older sister, the smart sister. She studied art history in New York, tried to get her family out of East Prussia, but I was able to prevent that. You say you loved her, and yet you wanted to deny her and her family a safe life. They were safe. I protected them. It was for their sake that I joined the party. I had contacts. I wrapped them in my protective embrace. You didn't let her escape because you wanted to keep her close to you. She sent photos to her sister before the war. She must have recognized me yesterday in Venice. I certainly recognized her. The Baroness was searching through her photos. That's true. She couldn't get me during the war. And after the war, I disappeared. Gave myself a new name, a new resume, a new life. And then, suddenly, there she was. About to ruin everything. So, she had to die. I didn't want that. But she gave me no choice. Why did she have to stir up old ghosts? All, all right now. No. It ends here and now. Why do you want to kill yourself? Isn't it obvious? He can't bear his false, hollow life anymore. Who are you? What do you want? A man who understands etiquette and honor and yet is nothing but a coward himself. Who? Because of wounded vanity burdens himself with immense guilt. Don't come any closer. The Baroness held a mirror up to you, didn't she, Doctor? And you hated what you saw there. So you smashed the mirror. But the sins of the past are catching up with you now, aren't they? No. A skull with empty eyes full of fear. Stop it. Oh, dear. You really know how to dampen the mood. I almost had him. And you? Aren't you supposed to follow orders? Are you not here to assist me? I won't. That wasn't a question. I don't want any dead bodies. The same old story. You want success, but you don't want to get your hands dirty. Isn't the Raven famous for that? I do what's necessary. No! No, no! What is it then? You wanted to jump anyway, or you should at least. Inch! I'm just lending a friendly hand. He's a coward. He needs a bit of motivation. Come on now, chop chop, jump! You are the Baroness's butler, aren't you? I... I did not want to kill your mistress. Oh, 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 nonsense. Forgiven and forgotten, if you don't mind my asking. There must be another solution. Why are you doing this? Nothing personal. Well, that's not entirely true. You're a miserable excuse for a human being, aren't you? But mainly, you're a means to an end. Your death will get Inspector Legrand off our backs. The Inspector? What do I have to do with him? Your letter. The one in which you confess to being the Raven and to killing the Baroness because she saw through your ruse. <laughs> That's absurd. Indeed it is. But people will believe almost anything if it suits them. The press will love it. Bold Inspector Legrand saves the day again. Interviews, medals, urgent telegrams from the capital. Our dear friend won't be able to escape the limelight. And by the time the commotion has ended, I'll be long gone. You can't kill him. Why not? He's a bastard, his death will help us, and he's a witness. If we let him go, we'll both go to jail. All the same, we're not gonna kill him. You got us into this situation. And as long as I'm alive, I won't let anyone be killed in my presence. No. You can't kill both of us. Oh, I think you'll find I can. You can't kill me, you still need me. I have to do the dirty work for you in the museum, so you won't be shooting me, or him. Very well, you win.
What? Oh, never speak to me like that again. Do you understand? I need you to steal the eye, but one day I could be overwhelmed by a feeling of hatred that will make me forget the eye. And there are worse things I could do than simply shoot you. I suggest you go back to your cell. You need to be fit for Cairo. I still have a confession to write. The last act, the end of the Raven. Part of me wants to abandon the whole plan and go back to Europe. What if something goes wrong and Legrand catches on? I couldn't bear it if something happened to her. I can't afford to slip up. Mr. Jamal, I'm glad you could make it. Let's get this over with. Still angry on account of the good doctor? You disgust me. You'll be rid of me in less than two hours, and I of you. What happens next? My diversion worked wonderfully. The press has laid siege to the French embassy, and Legrand won't be able to escape them. He should arrive in a few minutes with the safe, and then he'll have to answer ridiculous questions from reporters all afternoon. That's why we're striking now. A regrettable necessity. I would have preferred to make my grand entrance this evening at the garden. But yes, we will strike as soon as the safe is in the treasure chamber and Legrand has left. Have you already met your Mr. X? He's counting an envelope of unmarked bills as we speak. He put the blueprints under the statue of Imhotep. Blueprints? A sketch of the museum, not the kind you can get just anywhere. This one shows secret entrances, basements, and attic rooms that the Resistance used during the war. That's what it was about. Get the blueprints. There's a basement below the treasure chamber. The entrance should be marked on the blueprints. Open it and give me a sign. What's the next step? You'll find out when it's time. But... <sighs> Will there be more deaths here in the museum? If you follow my instructions, no. If people are in danger, I'll call the whole thing off. I don't kill for fun, only when it's necessary. Is it ever really necessary? Sometimes. Revenge, for example. When one has been betrayed. All right then, I'll pay a visit to Imhotep and we'll meet in the basement. Good monkey. Oh, and by the way, the museum is closed to visitors until tomorrow. Then how... You'll find a way. I bet the craftsmen are nearby. If not in the museum, then somewhere around here. I bet the craft... I hope the owner doesn't come back while I'm tampering with the truck. Craftsmen aren't known for their calm, sympathetic natures. Ah! Locked! The door is... There's a tennis ball stuck on the toe hitch. Ah, people do that to protect the hitch and their trouser legs from the grease. Got it! I bet the craftsmen are nearby. If not in the museum, then somewhere around here. Fire lamp. 
Maybe I can get into the museum from the roof. Nope. The handbrake is on. I have to improvise if I want to get into the museum. Oh, nothing. Do I need an umbrella in Cairo? Or could it help me get into the museum? Hmm. A rod like that could be useful. I don't want to crawl through stinking sewers just to get into the museum. There must be another way. There's a metal grate over the drain to prevent people from tripping. I can't make out what's below. Who's a good dog? Yeah, who's a good dog then? I like dogs. I had a border collie back home. Followed me everywhere. He was very old, but the most loyal friend you could wish for. I'd like to keep playing with the pup, but that's hardly going to get me into the museum. Today, the museum is officially closed for preparations for the big Eye of the Sphinx exhibit. The Sphinx still has two eyes on the poster. <laughs> they need to put an eye patch on it. I'd like to keep... The museum is closed today. Come back tomorrow. But there are visitors in the museum. Carefully selected by Director Mokhtar. Or they have an invitation. Is there any chance of getting such an invitation? For you? No. Can you please let me in? My ship sails tonight, and I can't leave Egypt without having seen a mummy. Get yourself a shovel and head for the desert. Maybe you'll get lucky. Never mind. See you later. Better luck next time, huh? <laughs> You're too kind. Maybe I can fish something out of the sewer with the wire. Nothing. I can't even touch the bottom. It was worth a try. With a bit of imagination. A true jack-of-all-trades. What's this?
this? Wow, nice. I'm afraid the painter discarded the overalls because he didn't want to walk around in sweat-soaked clothes all day. Ugh. But what the heck, I have no choice. A handsome man always looks good, and the disguise works. Do it. Yes, that might be just the thing. You want it? <laughs> yeah, you like that, don't ya? <laughs> Good dog. <laughs> Good dog. Who wants to become an accomplice in a burglary? Yes, who wants to be an accomplice? What are you doing? Come here, you... Stay away, you flea bag. Next time I'll wring your neck, even if it costs me my job.
You made yourself an enemy, pup. Stupid mutt! I'll get you this time! This is my chance. Next attempt. The museum is closed today. Come back tomorrow. Or, are you one of the craftsmen? Of course I'm a craftsman. All right. Chamitz, chamitz, chamitz. Your company is not on the list. But it must be on the list. My boss told me everything was taken care of. And mine told me that nobody gets in if they're not on the list. Bye! No. Disguise or no disguise. The tennis ball is...
Huh, cold. I'd be surprised if they needed to use it often in this climate. Nothing out of the ordinary. Wait, what's this? Someone scratched a triangle into the stone. Could that mean something? <laughs> well, budge. Guessing won't get me where I need to be. I need to get the blueprints from Mr. X. According to Inch, they show the secret passages in the building, and hopefully, instructions for getting into them. No. Disguise or no disguise, the security guard won't let me in if I'm not a registered... <laughs> Stupid mutt! I'll get you this... I talked to my boss again. He said we must be on the list. Your boss can come and see for himself. There is no Hamid. Uh-huh. Hmm. My co-worker's handwriting. I can hardly make out a single word. Hamid, Hamid, Hamid. Ah, yes. Here. Here, put this on. Ah, many thanks. The author's companion. She seems to be waiting for something. Maybe she's waiting for the safe, too. Hmm. I wouldn't have thought she'd be so interested in the jewel.
I better stay away from her. There's always a risk that someone observant might recognize me, and I bet that the lady is a very good observer. got the blueprints, and since I'm a craftsman, it won't seem suspicious if I study them. Here's the treasure chamber. There's another room beneath it. And here's the entrance, somewhere near the statue. And there seems to be another entrance that... What are you doing there? Huh? Oh, it's you. What's going on? And what happened on the ship? Everything is all right. I was able to stop the doctor. What happened to him? Inch. You mean he... There was nothing I could do. And he won't even tell me his plan. I'm supposed to get these blueprints and open a secret entrance to the basement beneath the treasure chamber. A basement under the treasure chamber? I didn't know about that before. Inch somehow heard about it, and Mr. X took care of the rest. What's he planning? I don't know. I don't like it. Me neither. The blueprints show the basement below the treasure chamber, and two entrances. One of them is over there, but it seems to be closed. And the other? It's on the roof, and there are stairs from an attic down to the basement. And how are you supposed to get into the attic? <laughs> That's the question. There's a small triangle here on the roof with three numbers next to it. Three, six, and two. Some kind of code. I'll have a look around. It'll be okay. I wish I had your confidence. It's time for the grand finale. Don't you agree? Take care of yourself. You too. A plan always seems much easier when you're just talking about it, doesn't it? Yes, but not half as exciting. Okay, I have to open the door to the basement. Let's go. The secret entrance to the basement must be behind the statue. It's well disguised. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone undetected for decades. I can't see anything. No cracks, no handle. I won't be able to open the door from this side. I'll try to get in through the roof, then take the stairs to the basement and have a go from inside.
The secret passage is somewhere around here on the blueprints. And so is the triangle scratched into the stone. Maybe this one. Uh -huh. Very good. Huh. Strange. Maybe the order is wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. The digits are written from right to left. In this part of the world, they read from right to left. I'm in the museum. Well, sort of. The electrical cables don't seem like they were meant to be permanent. Probably, they secretly tapped the museum's electricity. Maybe the bulb still works, but it's bright enough in here already. There's enough light shining through the holes in the roof. I don't need to turn the lamp on. Old technical equipment. Inch said something about an underground that operated here in the museum during the war. Could have been a radio installation. Would have been the perfect place for it. So high above the city. Maybe the bulb still works. But it's bright enough in here already. That's tar paper, I think. Maybe it's for covering all those holes in the roof. A big heavy roll of rough tar paper. Probably put there decades ago and then forgotten. A big he... There's enough light... According to the blueprints, the stairs lead from the attic down to the secret basement. I think it's nothing. Here we go. Nothing. The lamp was removed. You can still see the holes that the screws left. The cable was cleanly severed. The lamp, the cable was cleanly
Here we go. I could connect the cables to each other, but I'd need to strip the insulation from the cables on the wall and the lamp. Okay, plus and minus are exposed. I could connect the cable. I should be able to remove the insulation with this knife. Okay, I'll twist the wires from the lamp cord together with the wires from the electrical cable. Let there be light! Damn! I think the contact is dirty. I was right. The lower contact is coated with rust. The current can't flow properly, and sooner or later the bulb will burn out. Every time I... to rub the rust off. That should do it. One more try. There we go. If it wasn't so dusty, I could easily imagine someone had been using it. According to the blueprints, there's supposed to be a secret door here leading into the main hall. Huh, this must be the locking mechanism. Careful now. What the... What are you doing here? What if Inch sees you? No. I'm sorry. He... caught me. You and your little girlfriend. 
You thought you could go behind my back? Inch, no. You deserve to die, here and now. But then I wouldn't get the eye. Don't hurt her, please. We'll see. Get moving. And now... Cover to the chair. No! Patricia! Ah! Ah! No! Enough! You have one and only one chance of getting out of this alive. Do what I tell you to do. Tie her to the chair. Look at her. Remember this scene? If you try to screw me, then... What's the next step? What's the plan? Everything you need is in the bag. The eye will be delivered at any moment. You abseil from the roof into the treasure chamber. And the display case's alarm system? The alarm will go off, but I'll ensure that the only effect will be that the security barricades in the treasure chamber close. How will you manage that? Let me worry about that, just like the guards. You'll have several minutes to break into the display case and climb back to the roof. And once I have the jewel, what next? By the time I get back to the roof, the museum will be surrounded by policemen. Correct. Escaping from the museum is impossible. That means I stay inside the museum. There's a bag in the basement with food and water for you and your girlfriend. I'm sure you'll find a way to pass the time for a couple of days. The police will search the whole city for the eye, but not the museum. And once the museum's open to visitors again, Patricia and I will walk out through the secret door in the main hall to our freedom. I'll be watching you every step of the way. You'll deliver the jewel, and then we'll never see each other again. How am I supposed to break into the display case? It's protected by bulletproof glass. You'll find everything you need in the bag. A clever fellow like you will know what to do with it. If we do everything you ask, will you let us go? I'm a poor loser, but a generous winner. How did you find out about our plan? By chance, I must admit. I hadn't anticipated it. I didn't think that you'd build up my trust for months just to betray me. You have to be patient if you want to steal the eyes of the Sphinx. A virtue youth normally lacks. It's a pity we have to go our separate ways after this little incident. I can hardly wait. Please, let Patricia go. You've got me. A fascinating young lady. Clever, skillful, beautiful. What's she doing with a chap like you? Are you sure you're not just a pawn in her game? Let her go. As soon as you bring me the second eye. The plan might work, I must admit. The plan will work. You'll see to that, or she'll suffer the consequences. Let's go. The clock is ticking. I have to take care of the guards and the alarm system. It'll all work out in the end. I know. Take care of yourself. If you should open this door without the Eye of the Sphinx in your bag, I'll shoot first and then ask what went wrong. You're not planning on letting us go, are you? I need a scapegoat. Otherwise, the traitor would already be dead. He doesn't understand because he doesn't think like you. You messed with the wrong man. Now you have to suffer the consequences.
climbing equipment, including a rope, a cloth bag. Huh? A pack of gum. Why did Inch put a pack of gum in a cloth bag? That's all. Climbing equipment and a pack of chewing gum. I'm beginning to feel under-equipped for this burglary. <sighs> Looks like I'll have to improvise. There's nothing else in the bag, and I don't need the bag itself. A good rope, and more than long enough to abseil down into the treasure chamber. This is the same climbing equipment that I wore for the burglary in London. Only the mask is missing. Does Inch want to make sure that the security cameras can see my handsome face? Every time I don't have the... A pack of chewing gum. Huh, my favorite brand. I'll leave it there until I need it. Maybe the tap is meant to depressurize the water tank if it rains too much. Or it's just a practical way for the window washers to get some fresh water up here. Crank. Something for opening windows that are too heavy to move with your hands. Your new home. I can see the treasure chamber. There are several people moving around down there. I think the eye is being delivered. Harp is covering something. Huh. Bucket, rags, squeegee, tools of the trade for window washers. Probably didn't feel like carrying their equipment up to the roof every time, so they stashed it here. I don't need the squeegee. The bucket? Not really. This rag, on the other hand, I could wipe away fingerprints with it. Only one piece left. Ooh, what's this? Unless this is the most expensive chewing gum commercial ever, Inch wanted me to find the diamond. I'm sure it's not a reward for all my hard work. The diamond isn't bad. Would it be good for... This window can be opened. Must be an entrance for the window washers and maintenance crews when they have to work up here in the cupola. Huh. 
There's a mechanism that opens the window when you turn the crank. Huh. I see two contacts down there on the frame. There's a piece of metal stuck between them and fixed to the window. If I open the window, the piece of metal will move, breaking the circuit and setting off an alarm. Unless the guards have been notified beforehand, which is hardly an option in my case, I have to bypass the circuit. Huh. I can't cut any of the windows out of the frame, but this window has a rubber seal on the bottom and the sides. The roof of the museum is now officially drafty. Yes, the aluminum foil might bypass the circuit. Oh, that's darn tight. I can override the contacts with the strip, but I can't... Oh, oh, damn! I lost the strip! It would never have worked anyway. The gap was too small. Cold, dripping wet. I'm not putting it in my pocket like that. Okay, I'm in. And now back and forth and away we go. Got it. The wet rag is lying on the contacts. Excellent. No alarm. Okay. I don't see anyone. An attempt would fail here. The display case is bolted to the floor and weighs several hundred kilograms. What's that? A camera? The latest model. It's called video surveillance. I've heard about that. The images are recorded and can be viewed again later. That's right. Images from all three cameras are recorded in the card room. Wow. As I've said, we've spared no effort and no expense. I think I've seen enough here, but I'm interested in something else. <sighs> the camera covers the whole room. And I don't have a mask. Just have to hope that Inch knocked out the guard in the guard room. If not, he'll be on his way to check the camera soon. Here goes nothing. Now or never. As a visitor, I'd only have eyes for the jewel. As a burglar, though, I'm more interested in the bulletproof glass, about half an inch thick, 
There's no glass cutter that could do the job. Press the diamond into the chewing gum with the tip towards the window. The chewing gum holds the tip of the diamond right on the bulletproof glass. That's promising. This cordon doesn't apply to burglars. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. No, no! He wants to lock me in. But why? He doesn't have the jewel yet. What is he... Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my head hurts. Oh. focused on the hole in the floor. He's up there, Robert. I know it. Maybe. Go to the guard room and open the gates. Tell the director. Zelma, don't do it. It's too dangerous. I've got everything under control. Sorry, Constable. This is the opposite of a clever burglary. Inch must have decided to do it the violent way as soon as he realized he couldn't count on me. I would have died in the explosion and been the scapegoat. Everything's destroyed. Priceless works of art, centuries old. Nothing is sacred to Inch. The sarcophagus protected me from flying debris. <laughs> The ancient Egyptians knew their stuff. He's unconscious. He'll wake up with a headache in a few minutes. There is no other way. How did you do it? How did you plant the message on the safe in the train? How did you know that Gebhardt killed the Baroness? And the demolition charge below the treasure chamber? How... How did you manage it all? Even if your arm isn't lame? Oh, it is, believe me. I needed help, it's true. A messenger boy to replace my arms and legs. A messenger boy? Ah, adieu. This could be interesting. He's quite talented, but unreliable. He has a mind of his own, his own plans. Don't you, Adil? I never wanted blood to be shed, but it's time to make an exception. Hmm. He only forgot one thing. I keep things firmly in hand. Always. End of story.
No! Stupid little policeman. He shouldn't have messed with the raven. You aren't the raven. The raven would never have shot a defenseless old man. No, he wouldn't have. But now he has. At least that's what everyone will think. Why does that matter? Who are you? We worked for him, for the raven. My brother and I. He's responsible for my brother being shot and for my crippled arm. He sacrificed us. Who? Who is the raven? I don't know. I never met him, and in all these years, I've never found him. You don't know who you worked for? No one knows who the raven is. Some say he's dead. The fact is, he never returned to the stage after that fatal night in Paris. So you want to lure him out of hiding? And if anything can, it's the burglary of the century, executed by another thief while using his name. Hmm. He doesn't come. But I still got my revenge. The gentleman thief, now a bomb-throwing murderer. Oh, I do hope he is still with us, watching helplessly as I ruin his life's work, as he ruined mine. Enough chatter. I'll be going. But, but why? Your little girlfriend escaped, and if I can't eliminate all the witnesses, I can at least destroy their credibility. Why did you just shoot poor Constable Zellner, lad? They'll hang you and your accomplice. <laughs> You've met your match, Raven. Do you hear me? Wherever you are, I beat you. Good evening, Mr. Inch. The eyes of the Sphinx, if you would be so kind. You? That's impossible! The jewels, now! Inch, don't move a muscle. You're under arrest. <sighs> A master thief who stole two cheap fakes and then fell to his death. A shot that no one could explain. But for the newspapers, it was the real jewels that were the heart of the story. The eyes of the Sphinx, reunited in the Egyptian Museum. What kind of game is this? The Raven's Game. Uh, at least you caught him. Um, again. I saw the surprise and the anger in Inch's eyes. He knew he'd been played. You don't mean... At first they wanted us to believe that it was Gephardt. And now we're supposed to believe that it was Inch. He's still out there. So then, who is the Raven? Hello there, handsome devil. Hey there, pretty lady. Don't! My father will be here any moment. Did you tell him about our engagement? She did. I almost slipped out of character. Oh, Daddy. We all know that would never happen. You were Anton Jakob Zellner through and through, even with the world crashing down around you. Didn't go too badly, did it? 
Well, Inch nearly blew us up, and I was almost charged with murder. Ah, yes. Exciting, wasn't it? I haven't had fun like that since I retired. Dr. Gebhardt nearly killed you. Nobody could have suspected the doctor. At least we managed to clear things up quickly. I would have preferred it if things went according to the old plan. We would have swapped the jewel aboard the ship, and Alex wouldn't have been kidnapped by Inch. And I'd have preferred it if you hadn't given me a nasty bump on my noggin. And what would your excuse have been for staying on board if I hadn't? Hey, I improvised. Hmm. Good point. I was afraid Inch would realize you were wearing a bulletproof vest. He was too confident. After he foiled your plan, he thought he had everything under control. He never really took a look at the emerald in the display case. He just assumed that they shipped the real jewel from Switzerland. And after my little tussle with Inch, we had both jewels. He blew half the museum to smithereens just to steal a fake. He was always rude and insolent. I never should have worked with him. His double dealing cost his brother's life. And his own as well. I'd still rather see him in jail than in a morgue. He shouldn't have messed with the Raven. To your retirement. To the future. Finally. Dear Nico, the, the raven, raven is dead. Yet other criminals live and they are more brutal and ruthless than he ever was. Who will stop them? It would be tragic if a good policeman failed to do so because he was hunting for a dead man and ruining himself in the process. Let the dead rest in peace. They're they are not coming, coming back. Are.
Einfach wieder.